Imagine this for a minute. The year is 2060 and it's New Year's Day. It seemed like only yesterday that you were surrounded by all of your loved ones in your home living room, but instead, 10 years later, you're actually locked in a small doomsday bunker with your whole family and only five ration cards allotted per month for the essentials. You're a loving grandparent to two wonderful little kids who are always full of joy, even during the darkest of times. Over your career, you've made huge, huge advancements and impacted a ton of people. And in your prime time, you've traveled the whole world and even once climbed Mount Everest. Before all of this, you lived a beautiful life. And yet you know that your grandchildren will not be able to do the same. Everything that you've done and everything that you've already achieved doesn't matter. This is because climate change has already robbed your grandchildren of living a normal and healthy life before it's hardly begun. It was exactly like they predicted four years ago. People knew that climate change was gonna destroy humanity, but they didn't do shit, and they let the world get worse and worse until mother nature got angry and unleashed her powers. Now, this is where we live. Okay, let's come back to 2021. Let's talk because we have a problem. Climate change is single-handedly the worst ecological disaster that we're facing and we face as a species. And in fact, it's gotten so out of hand that scientists predict that will cross the dreaded two degree limit as early as 2026. The effects? We'll see massive biodiversity loss on a scale never to be seen before since the last massive extinction. Global food and water shortages, struggling coastal cities, billions rendered homeless and natural disasters worse than they've ever been. See, despite the trillions of dollars invested in renewables like wind, solar, and hydro, carbon capture, and ecological restoration, Greenhouse gas emissions still aren't going down. And even if our investment in renewables pays off, their intermittency, extremely high land usage, and complex natural resource requirements serve as a huge challenge to implementing emission-free technology. In fact, current renewable energy sources can take up to 10,000 times the space of fossil fuel. This means more deforestation, local community displacement, extinctions, and less land available to feed a growing population. Overcoming this technological challenge is a problem that will take decades, precious time that we don't have. So what do we do? We need to find a way to generate electricity without harming the planet or the environment. And this is where nuclear power comes in. A power dense, ecologically friendly technology that can help save us and the planet. Emissions free and perhaps the safest generation method of electricity since the beginning of time. This seems like the perfect solution to meet global energy demands while keeping the environment intact. The problem, however, is that current nuclear power plants are extremely expensive, complex and time consuming, and won't solve climate change fast enough. In fact, only one successful American nuclear plant has been built in the past 20 years, with dozens going significantly over budget and the time constraints. The average nuclear power plant takes six years and over $21 billion to come online. In contrast, the average natural gas plant takes only two years and $2 billion to start producing electricity. It's clear, to truly scale nuclear, we need to bring down the cost drastically and bring down the construction time while increasing the efficiency. And that is exactly what we're doing. Introducing our new moonshot company, Athermo. We're revolutionizing the nuclear industry with the next generation of nuclear reactors, ones that can be manufactured at scale, providing fast, cheap and reliable energy for the globe. To understand our technical solution, you need to first understand how nuclear works in the present day. Today's nuclear reactors operate on a very simple set of instructions and steps to produce electricity. First, an unstable element most commonly known as uranium-235 is placed inside of a closed chamber. Second, this atom is then split, releasing huge amounts of energy and neutrons, which then goes on to split onto more atoms and releases more energy. This process is known as nuclear fission. Number three, the heat produced by these reactors warms surrounding water to extremely high temperatures and then thus generating high pressure steam. Next, this steam is then used to spin turbines, which then in turn powers the generator. And poof, you have electricity. As you can see, this is an extremely complex process that requires dozens of moving parts, pumps, and containment systems. And in fact, expensive and time-consuming cooling towers, the trademark sign of a nuclear power plant, needs to be built to discharge excess steam into the atmosphere. All of this takes significant capital to be built and occurs in the two forms of major costs. 
Number one, capital costs. These costs are actually incurred during the building of a plant. Things like the reactor, different components, and the hiring of construction teams to bring the plant online. This makes up 60% of the total cost of a nuclear power plant. And number two, operating costs. This is the cost of operating the reactor on a day-to-day -day basis with maintenance, ensuring parts are in correct working order, hiring operational personnel, and etc. This contributes to the remaining 40% of the overall cost. The main reason for these high costs actually lies in the complexity of the nuclear power plants. Each plant is usually custom designed, which each project requires a different array of parts and suppliers from around the world. This, combined with a lack of government subsidies for nuclear power, makes it extremely difficult for government and development teams to manufacture nuclear power plants at scale and gain experience building reactors. This is because each one is designed differently. This problem is actually known as a lack of standardization and is a primary challenge that our team is tackling to bring scalable nuclear power to the market. In order to harness the full environmentally friendly potential of nuclear power, there are three distinct steps that we need to take to overcome the standardization barrier. First is miniaturization. It's actually very difficult to scale gargantuan power plants. The added size adds significant construction challenges and billions of dollars more to the end total. To achieve our goal of scaled nuclear power, we need to take advantage of SMRs, small modular reactors, devices that produce less than 300 megawatts. While these reactors produce less power individually, multiple can actually be added to the same power plant, keeping power while improving scale. Number two, simplify. It's no surprise that nuclear is one of the most complex ways of generating energy. However, it's this complexity that makes this technology unable to provide power to the world, not to mention increasing manufacturing difficulties. To handle this, a therma is actually eliminating the middleman and middle party entirely, getting rid of the need for steam, turbines, and alternators in the nuclear power plants. We're actually converting the heat from nuclear reactors directly into energy using nanotech enhanced thermoelectric semiconductors, improving efficiency and simplifying the reactor design. Ultimately, this is going to make it a lot easier to overcome the third challenge. Number three, manufacturing. Our end vision is a world where simplified nuclear power can be mass produced in factories. Current reactors by other SMR companies are way too complex to be manufactured in factories, resulting in dozens of on-set construction teams and two times in cost overruns. Due to our simplified thermoelectric design, we will be able to assemble the majority of the reactor inside factories and need to build minimal infrastructure to construct the plant itself, resulting in the decreased need for giant cooling towers or steam release systems. By combining existing technologies, SMRs, with a novel approach with simplification and mass manufacturing with thermoelectric reactors, a thermal will be able to pave the path forward for the standardization of nuclear power. Now that we've outlined a general strategy, let's talk about the how. First, what is a thermoelectric device? Thermoelectric devices are just what they sound like, devices that turn heat, thermo, into electricity, electric, using a principle known as the Seebeck effect. Basically, these devices generate a voltage when there's a high enough temperature differential on either side. Here's a diagram to explain. As you can see, one side is heated while the other is cooled, resulting in the displacement of electrons and ultimately results in electricity. It's the same principle that a thermo aims to use with their thermoelectric nuclear reactors. Rather than needing to convert water to steam and move the steam through a turbine and then generate electricity via an alternator, instead what we can do is actually simply place the exterior of the nuclear core within these devices, directly converting fission heat into electricity. However, our team actually encountered a core challenge <laughs> while attempting to bring this vision to reality. Current thermoelectric technology was just way too inefficient. Where most steam turbines had a conversion efficiency of around 40%, the most efficient thermoelectric device was actually stuck at around 9%. In fact, this is one of the primary reasons that this technology hasn't already been brought to the market. Radioisotope heat sources are simply too inefficient to use with nuclear fission and were instead used as, as atomic batteries in niche deep space missions by NASA and the like. The reason for this inefficiency the delicate balance between thermal conductivity and electric conductivity. To improve efficiency, we need a material that conducts electricity well, but also conducts heat poorly. Otherwise, the temperature differential will slowly degrade over time and reduce the amount of power that we can generate. This property is measured 
by the figure of merit. And some estimates suggest that this figure will need to be above two in order to take over the traditional power generation methods. Currently, the average for the industry is actually around one. So what's the solution? The answer actually lies in nanotechnology, specifically using nanostructures smaller than the wavelength of light to decrease thermal conductivity and increase electric conductivity. We're actually spearheading development in nuclear grade thermoelectric technologies in partnership with existing institutions to end humanity's reliance on fossil fuels. Currently, the nanomaterial that shows the most promise is actually graphene. Graphene is expected to be much stronger than steel and much lighter than paper. As a carbon-based 2D material, graphene for our application has actually been found to exhibit a figure of 1.4 when synthesized with various chemical vapors, with some scientists believing that it can actually reach a peak efficiency of 6.1, triple the threshold needed to actually become more efficient than the current electrical generation methods. By further facilitating development in this field, we open the possibility of harnessing this gargantuan power in the nuclear field. Graphene has been proven time and time again to perform extremely well in controlled settings. In the next few years, with further development and research in the industry, this will grow exponentially with the advent of nanotechnology, and we expect this material to fit perfectly into our solution. Combined with our own findings, this is a strong indicator that the field of thermoelectric devices will soon overtake traditional power generation methods. We believe that we can further accelerate development in the field for nuclear applications by diving deeper into applying nuclear and graphene and nanotech for our moonshot company. Once graphene has been chosen and modified to withstand the high pressures of the nuclear reactor, the next step is actually to construct the reactor itself. After multiple prototypes, our team has actually designed a simple and yet elegant model of what this may look like. By having thermoelectric plating directly in contact with the cooling fluid, a thermo ensures that an extremely high temperature differential can be created, allowing for high rates of power generation over a consistent period of time. By having the thermoelectric plating come directly in contact with the cooling fluid, a thermo ensures that an extremely high temperature differential can be created, allowing for high rates of power generation over a consistent period of time. Ultimately, the development of this new technology will result into up to three times efficiency, two times reduction in costs, and lower land occupation, which combined allows for nuclear power to be generated and deployed at scale, dramatically improving competitiveness with fossil fuels. Our vision is a world a world where nuclear power fuels the globe towards a greener and brighter future, where billions don't have to face the devastating impacts of climate change through the air pollution, through massive food shortages and water shortages, and the other drastic effects. A world where your grandchildren can look back with pride at the efforts of humanity to save the planet. And all of this is possible by the next generation of nuclear power, smart zero emissions and large scale power for the world. To learn more about Atherma, our moonshot company, visit our website at www.atherma.org. Atherma, using nanotechnology to create next generation, scalable nuclear power, providing emissions-free energy to all.